We are in the last few patches of TFT set 11 Inkborn Fables. In this video, we'll be analyzing one of our gameplay sessions in the Challenger Lobby with a meta contender comp for this patch. As we have the championship around the corner, there were not many changes in patch 14.13. The only unit that has received a small attack speed buff is Kaisa. Other than that, the Ink Shadow trait has received some buffs. Along with it, the Sniper trait regains stats that were nerfed in the previous patch. These Challenger Lobbies are extremely competitive, and to sustain, we have to adapt to the evolving meta. The game started with the Trainer Sentinel's portal, and I got emblems like Sniper, Sage, and Ink Shadow on my Sentinel. As I already mentioned, the Ink Shadow trait is buffed, so I can play a vertical Ink Shadow board. For the first augment, I picked 1, 2, 3, but I didn't get any useful units. In the early game, I activated the Ink Shadow synergy. I crafted the first item as Last Whisper, as it is ideal for Senna and Kaisa. I usually mark the required units for my my final board on my team planner to save some time while re-rolling. Apart from the Ink Shadow units, since I had a Sage Emblem too, I can add Morgana and other ghostly units to complement it. I am aiming for this final board, where Senna can be the main carry if maxed out, otherwise, we can transfer the items later on to Kaisa. I didn't get any better items this time in the monster round. For the second augment, I picked Team Building, eyeing to max out Senna. Upon re-rolling, I got one of the best possible shops with Kaisa, which activated the 5 ink shadow synergy. In the next reroll phase, I got a Morgana as well. Later on, I crafted a static shiv for her. In the next encounter, Aleo I granted 8 free rerolls, using which I maxed Aatrox and got a few more copies of Senna. Moving to level 7, I added Kane, activating the 4 ghostly synergy. These lobbies are very competitive, thus, going on a streak is pretty hard but I am trying to maintain a streak. For the third augment, I opted for Haunted House. I was strong enough to beat most of my opponents. Having a 7 win streak, I moved to level 8. Then I maxed out Senna with the lesser champion duplicators that I got through the second augment. Now, I had to move to level 9 and add Udur and Volibear to complete my final board. I lost my 8 win streak in a very close encounter against the Sniper Warden comp. Sniper was the other trait that was buffed in this patch. I was waiting for a long time to complete the items for Senna with an Infinity Edge, which I finally made. I faced tough opponents, including an 8 Duelists comp and other dominating comps like Sniper Warden and Bruiser Reaper. I lost one more round against the Sniper Warden opponent, but I still got into the top 4. From the 5 to 4 carousel, I picked Adur. Quickly, I moved to level 9 and activated the 7 Ink Shadow Synergy. Regarding the tattoo items, these are the best fit units for them. For ideal itemization, check out these strategies. For our main carry Senna, another potential carry Kaisa, tank on either Aatrox, Shin, Volibear, or Aleoi, and excess item holders such as Udur and Morgana. And as mentioned earlier, tattoo items can be used accordingly. The 8 Duelist comp player was completely dominating. I lost one more close encounter against the sniper comp. I must two-star my Udur to counter the Ash, which I managed in the next brief reroll. Positioning and flexibility are key in the final stages. Upon strategically positioning Udur, I managed to beat both of my opponents and got the top one position. This comp gave me a comfortable top one in this challenger lobby. We will be posting the analysis of the other meta sniper warden comp in the challenger lobby in the next video. That brings us to the end of this video. Hope you learned something new, and do try it out and let us know in the comments. For more gameplay analysis, subscribe to our channel, Item Swap.